Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us pray, and we shall say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the glory of Let us pray the prayer collect for the third Sunday of Easter. Lord of life, by submitting to death you conquered the grave. By be lifting up on the cross you draw all people to you. By being raised from the dead you restored to humanity all that was lost through sin. Be with us in your risen power that in the word and deed we may proclaim the marvellous mystery of the death and resurrection. For all praise is yours, now and throughout eternity. Amen. Would you please be seated. The first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at chapter verse 12 to verse 20. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. Through this, we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us re read the psalm, Psalm 4, alternate verses. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. When I was hard pressed, you set me free. Be gracious to me now and hear my prayer. Children of earth, how long will you turn my glory to my shame? How long will you love what is worthless and seek after lies? Know that the Lord has shown me his wonderful kindness. When I call to the Lord, he will hear me. Children of earth, Children of earth, how long will you turn my glory to your, my shame? How, how long, long will you love, love what, what is worthless, worthless and, and seek after, after lies? Know that the Lord has shown me his wonderful kindness. When, when I, I call, call to the Lord, Lord he, he will, will hear me. me. Tremble and do not sin. Commune, Commune with, with you your own heart, heart upon, upon your bed and be, and be still. still. Offer the sacrifices that are right. And, and put, put your, your trust in the Lord. Lord. There are many who say, who will show us any good? The light the of light your of countenance, your countenance O, Lord, o Lord, has, has gone, gone from us. us. Yet you have given my heart more gladness. Then they, they have, have when their corn, wine, wine and oil increase. increase. In peace I will lay down to sleep. For, for you, you alone, alone Lord, Lord, make me dwell in safety. safety. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. A reading from the first letter of June. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desire are passing away. But those who do the will of the God, will of God live forever. See what love the Father has given us, that we shall be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do, what we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he, he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty, is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Here's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gradual hymn. <laughs> Oh, no. 
you believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me. Happy those who have not seen, but still believe. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Why do you doubt arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While their joy was believing and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish. They took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is in to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> May the words of my lips, the meditations of all our hearts, be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning I am going to digress somewhat. Normally I preach on the Gospel, but today I will be preaching on one of the Psalms, Psalm 46. It could be summed up with the words of Martin Luther. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper he amidst the flood. I'd like to read Psalm 46 to you now. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, and she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he hath brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted to the earth. 
The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So often in times of trouble, we turn to the book of Psalms, and the Psalms in many ways speak to us because they are from a human background and from what people experience in life. And this psalm, in, in 1527, when all the forces of the Holy Roman Empire and the church were against Martin Luther and the princes that supported him, so he too, in time of trouble and stress, both domestic and international, can trust in the same God as Luther and the psalmist, for God is our refuge and strength. The psalm is in three parts, expressing first a gentle confidence in the power and providence of God, then a particular experience of it in the deliverance of the city, and lastly, an assurance that he will establish his universal kingdom of peace. The first section, verses one to three, a firm anchorage in God while all else is insecure. The psalm opens with a note of high confidence in God. In God alone, under the shadow of his wings, is their safety. In this time of trouble for Judah, God has alone been faithful. All the nations around have fallen and collapsed under the forces of Assyria. Within a few short years, all her neighbours have been overrun, Syria, Israel, Moab and Ammon. Now Judah faced the same fate. In verses 2 and 3, the psalmist writes, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should shake, change and though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble in tumult. It seems as though the whole of nature was affected by this event and that there would be a return to primal chaos in which nature was upturned. But it not only refers to nature, but to the nations that have been destroyed by Assyria. For in the Old Testament, the word mountains often meant nations and the sea, people. So man and nature was affected by the events. Yet in all this tumult and collapse, Judah has one who will not and could not let her be lost. One who could help, and he did, and gave her victory. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. The world could collapse, but God is in control. Does not this fit our world today? People are saying, Western culture, Western civilization is collapsing. And they ask, is it worth saving? Yet all our confidence must be in God, who is still in control of history. Joy, the second section is joyful assurance in the impregnable city of God. In a time of siege, the most important thing in the psalmist's day was good, strong fortifications of the city with well-built walls. But one thing that was more important to Jerusalem and to a besieged city was an adequate water supply. As the psalmist looked at Jerusalem, he saw that the city had been the city had both these important benefits. Jerusalem was built on hills with a stout wall for protection and above all a water supply within the city itself. The psalmist writes, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. These words help us to date the psalm. For prior to the attack by the Assyrian army under Sennacherib, Hezekiah had strengthened the walls and he had built a conduit to carry water from the Pool of Solomon to the upper city. And this conduit in recent times was rediscovered with the inscription stating it was built in the time of Hezekiah. Yet 
in these words, the psalmist has more than material needs in mind, for he's aware of the spiritual needs of God's people. For God is the only one who can supply our needs of peace and assurance of his love. For God is the centre of his people's assurance. Let the nations rage like the sea and the kingdoms totter like mountains in an earthquake, yet God has only to speak and the earth melts away. That is, before the voice of the Lord, the Assyrians were scattered. And then in verses 8 to 11, a call to consider the works of the Lord. In battle, the siege, it was God who gave the victory. History is here seen through the eyes of the psalmist, which is God-centred, with God as the sovereign Lord of history. Yet a secular historian would see it as another, another light, a play within the camp of the Sennacherib. But it is God who brings peace, and at the end of history it is God who will put an end to war. He makes wars to cease in the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. For peace only comes from God, whether among nations or in the heart of the individual, who is torn by the power and effect of sin. It is Christ that destroys sin and gives people peace within. And in verse 10, the psalmist writes, Be still and know that I am God. Here is a quiet confidence in God in which we are reminded that God alone is in control. Our confidence must rest in God and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans, Paul writes, What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? And the last verse of the psalm, The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Please stand as we confirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God, from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and ever our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the
flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Christ has reconciled us to God in the body of his cross. Would you please stand? We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Would you please remain standing for the offertory hymn? A mighty fortress is our God. Yours, Lord, is the greatness 
and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. All that is in heaven and earth is yours. All things come of you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. By his victory over death, the reign of sin is ended, a new life has dawned, a new day has dawned, a broken world is restored, and we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. <coughs> Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again. We celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. <laughs> As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand. Eternal God, giver of life, in the breaking of bread we know the risen Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring life to all creation. Keep us in this hope that we have grasped so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Would you please be seated? Good morning, everybody. Other service today at 11am, the Cantonese and Mandarin combined service. Uh, there's no Sunday school today due to school holidays. Uh, our regular activities for this week are also in recess because of the school holidays, except on Tuesday evening at 7.40pm, uh, we're having an anniversary service planning meeting, uh, it'll be a Zoom meeting, uh, to make sure we've got everything in place for the anniversary service coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, next Sunday, 9am, English Eucharist at 11am, combined Cantonese and Mandarin service and no Sunday school. Uh, for your information, our Lenten collection uh, prior to Easter was $557.05, uh, which has been given to the Anglican Board of Mission uh, for their Good Friday and Lenten appeal, and our Good Friday collection raised six hundred and ten dollars twenty. This has been sent also to the Angling Board of Missions for their Holy Land project. Uh, our anniversary service again next Sunday, the fourteenth of April. No, that's today, isn't it? Um, got the wrong date. It'll be the twenty-first, won't it? Uh, next Sunday. Uh, following the Chinese luncheon, there'll be a working bee to prepare the church for the anniversary service. Uh, we're asking people to come along and lend a hand on the day. Uh, and the following Sunday, the 28th of April, 9.30am, will be our anniversary service. It will be a combined English and Chinese service. Our special guests on the day are our Bishop Gary Koo and our state local member, Julia Finn. Uh, the service will be followed by morning tea. We ask our parishioners to bring a plate on the morning, on the day for the morning tea. Coffee, tea, soft drinks and water will be provided on the day. Uh, please advise us of any dietary requirements you or members of your family may have. Thank you to everybody who uh, worked today to make today's services possible, both here in church and online. Morning tea will be served on the outside area of the Charis Centre following the this uh, service. Uh, please come along and enjoy the fellowship. Following morning tea, we have our monthly English Bible study. Attendance is voluntary. Come along and, enjoy, and join in the Bible study. Thank you and good morning. Please stand for our closing hymn.
to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. I praise you, Lord. <laughs> 